Hello, Tracy from Salem. Uh, coming in today, reflecting on my new project. Um, so if you've been watching this channel, I was working all month on the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, uh, April Block, which I finally finished. Um, not, I'm not thrilled, and that's okay. That's all right. You're not going to do everything just the way you want to do it. I'm not even sure how I wanted to do this since I've never made a crazy quilt before. But anyway, the background prompt was crazy quilt and the focal point prompt was um, cottage. So I made a little little fairy cottage here under the uh, <clears throat> mushrooms. And um, yeah, so I made it too big. It, it's not the same size as the rest of my pages. Um, so I had to basically make it its own signature. So I just took this material, this um, upholstery material, and I made that the back so that it's just its own signature and, uh, and it can fit into the book. Although I had to say, barely, it barely fits into the book. The book is getting quite chunky. And I really hope that I can just fit the other two pages, May and June, in here because I really don't wanna make another book. That's really, I have no interest in doing that. So we'll see, I'll just have to try to make them thin. But that's finally finished. And I'm excited because I had been wanting to get back to this book. So if you've watched this channel, you know that my one of my January pages, I made two January pages, and one of them was influenced by this book, um, by a piece that she did in this book. And uh, so I've been wanting to get back to this book um, and try some of the other things that she talks about. Um, so I did have a chance to do some dyeing. I got this gorgeous hunk of pink wool at a library sale in the Cape when I was visiting some friends and I did do some dyeing. Um, these are a couple of the pieces. Um, these came out great, I thought. Um, not all of them came out that well. Uh, this, for example, um, yeah. But anyway, that's fine. Um, these two, came out and so um, hopefully I can use them in this piece. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, so the my inspiration, and so and so I've tried some dyeing and also she talks a lot about um, like, well, I probably shouldn't flip through the whole book because that's probably some kind of copyright something I shouldn't do. Um, but she talks in this book, which is a great, great book, um, about also felting pieces, about using tool to um, to knock back color um, and to kind of create a, like a uniform surface. Um, tool and chiffon, she talks about using that way. Um, she talks about, um, um, <clears throat> what was the other thing? Yeah, felting, I guess, was the other thing. Um, and so I've had a chance to try some of these things. Um, now she has an embellisher, which I don't have, but I do have a little felting, you know, thing that you punch. So I've tried some of the things that she talks about in this book since I made that first piece. Um, and so this time I am, um, she has a section on um, making a memory cloth. That's sort of the second half of the book is making a memory cloth. And um, so that is what I'm gonna work on. And this is my inspiration, this particular one, um, which is, I mean, just look at that. That's just stunning, isn't it? Look at the, the stitching detail. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, so this is my inspiration. Um, now this is a memory cloth. So that means it's my memories. Um, not hers. <laughs> so what I'm doing, my my um, the memory that I want to capture is a journey that I took. Um, and by journey, I don't mean travels. I mean like uh, um, what some people might call a shamanic journey. I don't like to use that word shamanic because it's from a particular culture and I'm a white woman. So I really don't want to be appropriating someone else's culture. It's specifically, it's from Siberian indigenous folks. Um, but my own culture, which is primarily 
the British Isles, Wales, England, Ireland, Scotland. My folks, are, my people are from all over that place and a little bit from Scandinavia. And they absolutely, at one point, my people were also indigenous. And, um, and they had, um, you know, some, they had, all cultures have similar practices in the sense of the idea that you can journey between the worlds. Um, and in some cultures, it might have been just the medicine person that did that. And some, some cultures that might have been open, you know, to all the people. Um, don't know enough about uh, cultures from the British Isles to know um, what the case was exactly with my people. But surely they had practices of traveling between the worlds. Um, it's in a lot of the poetry and the sagas, Norse sagas, all this kind of stuff. So um, in... Um, in kind of cultures from those islands, the, the symbol or a symbol that is frequently used to indicate between the worlds is the hedge. The hedge is between this world and the other world. And so I call myself a hedge walker. Um, but when I say that, most people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so periodically I use the word shamanic because our, everybody knows that that kind of points to particular practices. So anyway, that's a long way to say that this design, this memory cloth, is going to be based on a journey that I took. And in that journey, um, the egret was my guide. And so that's going to be my focal point is the egret. Um, poorly drawn here, but hopefully better. <laughs> um, this is kind of just a rough sketch of how my memory cloth is going to look. So de you definitely can see elements, um, influences from Jan Dowson's work um, in the sense of like these, uh, some of these um, stacks of stacks of shapes. Um, and I did a sort of as an homage to Jan Dowson, I put that flower that is her focal point, I put down in the corner, you know, as an homage to her. Um, but I will put, you know, uh, if you've seen any of my previous work and previous videos, you know I do these moons. Um, I'll have my uh, egret. Um, I have um, the bioregion that, uh, um, where I live, the, there's a lot of salt marsh where I live on the um, eastern edge of Massachusetts. Um, and, I, and it's like my favorite bioregion. And I'll have a tree, which is a very, very um, popular symbol in Celtic spirituality. Um, so there's, it's full of symbols that are important to me and meaningful to me. Um, so I'm, I've been working out, so this will be kind of a gradated sky, uh, getting darker and darker. Um, so I, I'm hoping to be able to use this thruster waist and kind of felt that in as like a thin line here at the bottom of just the sun setting, you know, basically, and then getting the sky getting darker and darker. So I've got this, a dyed, um, cheesecloth, I think it's from Seth Francis, and then each thing getting darker and darker and using some of the dyed wools that I did as inspired by Jan Dowson. Um, I might put this cheesecloth over parts maybe um, to kind of make it even darker. Um, I, kind of, I've, I kind of love the way that looks. It softens this cotton, it softens it down to a similar um, feel as the wool. So, Maybe, maybe that'll play in there, I'm not sure. Um, and then I've got a bunch of greens for, uh, you know, for more of this bottom area. Um, so I've got this green, green dyed felt, and this is also some green dyed cheesecloth. I, th I believe that both of these cheesecloths came from Steph Francis, I think, or Vibrana Wim, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then I've got uh, some, pinks and plums um, to come in here of different, I got some burlap I want for, for texture. So I'm really varying the texture. Oops, sorry. Um, and uh, this is some, some dyed silk, Steph Francis, I believe. 
Um, and then I got out my bag of scraps because, <laughs> all right, I'm not being very coordinated here. Got out my bag of scraps because, um, you know, all these little things will be scraps, made from scraps. So um, some of these are from, Gwen LaFleur has uh, some really wonderful boho scrap packs. Um, and some of these were like, for example, I use this in my crazy quilt. Um, some of these are, so I dyed this sari and I dyed this um, cheese cloth. Uh, I think this is um, also a Gwen LaFleur. Um, I like this scrap because it has that kind of a hedge walking feeling, right? <laughs> um, journey feeling. Um, so some stuff I've dyed and some stuff from Gwen LaFleur. Um, now here at the bottom, I've got these things which will hang from the bottom of the piece. And I'm, what I'm hoping is to use these silk cocoons. Um, also stuff Francis, I believe. I saw Ariane Zurcher, um, working with some, uh, on one of her videos and I was like, oh, those are, those are very cool. Um, those holes are literally to let the silkworm out. Um, so, uh, and then they've been dyed. Aren't those cool? Can you imagine those hanging from the bottom? I hope I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> uh, and then I've got some silk hanky and some throws for waste. Um, which I, I hope, or I anticipate, I will um, uh, felt into, um, felt in somewhere. We'll see. We'll see. Something will happen. Some things will happen, and we will see what they are. <laughs> but anyway, um, just uh, wanted to, uh, getting excited. Getting excited for this new piece, and... Um, wanted to show off a little bit of my ideas. And so this is, take a look now, because I'm sure that whatever I do will look nothing like that, right? <laughs> this is the beginning. Who knows how long it'll take me to do all this. And it could look totally different by the end. So, you know, who knows what'll happen, but something will happen. Hope you are enjoying your stitch life and having fun if you're doing the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Uh, and I'll see you again soon.